vicious circle because mistrust uh, 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 pushes you not to ask the question, not to ask the question, not to know, not to know, not to go to the, uh, uh, you know, not to, to, to go to the other and try to, to encounter the other. And then you are, you have this vicious circle that we have people isolated and not going to, 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 to take the risk to meet with the other. It's a risk, but it's a necessary risk of pluralism. And I think it's really important for us to, 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 to promote that. But you are right. Question. Ask the question. And where should we ask to start asking the question? In schools, in our society. And this is also why, you know, in your, your program, and I think that here we have also to repeat this. During the last week, how many people from the, with another background, cultural background, religious background, have you met? Just to be able to ask questions, to understand better. If you are sitting here and say, yes, I'm open-minded, but always with my own people, it's, 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 not, it's not possible. It's not a, this is the way we are speaking about multiculturalism, where multiculturalism is the patchwork of community. And I think that this is really, really uh, problematic, but it's the, 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 the duty, the responsibility of every single citizen to try to change that at his or her level, at the local level. In fact, the global challenges that we are facing can the, the, we have to start to solve them at the local level because this is where we can get this little trust. We have an empty microphone, so please don't be shy about coming up and contributing to the conversation. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on how we as Muslims interact with people who actually, their perceptions of Islam aren't based on something they hear from the media or, you know, this fear of terrorism. They're based on actually lived experiences of oppression at the hands of Muslims. Partly in the name of Islam, partly just under you know discriminatory regimes. How do we have interaction with those communities who experience real oppression in the hands of Muslims, and not sort of this, these issues of perceptions and everything? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Could you give me an example? Um, the Armenians, <laughs> Armenian genocide, um, civil war in Sudan, the Southern Sudanese, what they've experienced, um, Nigerians who experienced slavery in northern Nigeria. I mean. You have all these different communities that are sort of here, and the issues they're coming to towards the Muslim community are different because it's from their lived experience. Yes, it's a very good question, and I think that it comes to something which is really important. I think that what I said as you know one of the conditions of justice is consistency. And I think that in every situation, when it comes to Nigeria, it comes to Somalia, comes to Sudan, consistency. Meaning by that, that first, before judging or just, you know, stating something about, you know, what is going on, to study what is going on. And then to take a stand which is justice in every single situation. Meaning by that, and I, I did that many times, and, and this is why, you know, in, I kind of go to some majority, Islamic majority countries. Why? Because you cannot just say, yes, Muslims are discriminated and forget about Muslims uh, discriminating. So here there is a question of, of, uh, of consistency. When, for example, in Darfur, it's clear that there are things that are not right in the way the government is doing. Yes, there is, you know, political game. Why now and not before? That's true. That's true. But it's not because they are wrong that you are right. You are wrong and you are wrong. They are wrong and you are wrong. And you are wrong because what you are promoting there is really a policy which is just letting the people die. Not accept it. So to condemn what should be condemned. And my only, only philosophy in this is to remain faithful to my convictions and values and principles. When it's wrong that, you know, I was asked once about what about, you know, non-Muslims in Saudi Arabia and what about, for example, Pakistan in Saudi Arabia, or, or, or people coming from poor countries in Saudi Arabia, where they are treated as slaves? Why are the Muslims to speak about this? Why are we silent, saying that this cannot be accepted in the name of Islam? What is done to these people is something which is against our religion. If we are not consistent, you cannot just they ask the people to be consistent. When we are discriminated, say something. And when we are doing what people are doing in our name, no, only under pressure say that terrorism is wrong, oh yes, this is wrong. Say that this is wrong, yes, it's wrong. But out of our own self, to be able to deal with this, for example, I was in, in, in Brussels 
uh, last Saturday, and where people were saying, don't speak about the, the, the genocide, or there is no genocide in Romania, and there are discussions about it. I'm sorry. I'm not criticizing Turkey or the Ottoman Empire. I'm speaking of people who killed Armenians, and this was wrong and should be condemned. That's it. We have to be consistent. So, but not to please the West. I'm not going to please the West. I'm not going to please the West. I'm not going to please Western countries when they are themselves silent, when they are dealing with special monarchies that are dictated, when they are dictatorships for the sake of money. So they go to democracy in Iraq and they are silent about democracy in Saudi Arabia. And then we know why. I'm not Islamophobic when I am criticizing Saudi Arabia. I'm not anti-Semitic. Uh, when I'm criticizing the government is Israel. So I'm going to say that anti-Semitism is against the Islamic Christian. We will never accept that. I will never accept someone coming from, you know, what is done in Israel by saying, yes, but the Jews, the Jews know nothing. This is not acceptable. I will condemn that. But I will be free because this is the reality. This is something about the government which is oppressing to the Palestinians and saying when you are criticizing it that it's anti-Semitism. This is to play and to instrumentalize anti-Semitism in the name of the government and the policy which is plain oppression. Unacceptable. Unacceptable.